Okay, so this uh, video tutorial is meant to help you uh, for your friction quiz uh, tomorrow. So let's say that uh, we've got a flat surface and we've got a, let's just say it's a box and let's say its mass is uh, seven and a half kilos, okay? And let's be sure and not neglect our units. Okay, and so let's say that you are pulling this box in the uh, positive x direction. So we'll take the right to be positive. So you're pulling the box this way. And let's say you're pulling it with a force of, um, let's say, 5 newtons. Okay, so your force pull is 5 newtons, okay? And that is in the positive x direction. Now, if we neglect friction, then the only other forces acting on this box are its weight, which is the force due to gravity, and the normal force, which again, normal force is always perpendicular to your surface. Now, to find the weight of an object, this is where FigMig comes in. The force due to gravity equals mass times gravity, which we always take gravity as negative uh, 9.8. So gravity is negative 9.8, and the units on that are meters per second squared. So if you wanted to know the object's weight, you would just take 5 times negative 9.8. Or excuse me, not 5, 7.5 times negative 9.8. Mass times acceleration, because... The sum of all of your forces equals mass times acceleration. So let's think about this block. If I'm pulling it horizontally, the block isn't going to move up or down. So in other words, the uh, sum of my forces in the y direction equals zero. Because if it doesn't move in the positive x or y direction, that means there is no acceleration. So if the sum of my forces in the y direction equals zero, well, the sum of my forces in the y direction, all of that means is my normal force plus my force due to gravity. Both of those forces added up have to equal zero. Okay, so if we found the object's weight, 7.5 times negative 9.8, that gives me negative 73.5. So, negative 73.5 newtons. Now, I don't know what the normal force is, but since these equal zero, that means if I add that to the other side, then my normal force equals my weight. Okay? So, in this first example, we're neglecting friction. So, let's look at the sum of our forces in the x direction. Well, that, again, equals mass times acceleration. Well, the sum of my forces in the x direction, the only force I have is 5 newtons. Equals. Well, I know the object's mass. It's 7.5 kilos. And I don't know the object's acceleration. So that is an unknown. If I divide both sides by 7.5, then I get the object's acceleration which would be 0 0.6666666666 forever. So if I keep, uh, let's just say two sig figs, let's go 0 0.67 meters per second squared equals my object's acceleration. So that's an example if we neglect friction. Now let's say that we've got, uh, let's say the same box. So again, I'm pulling with, uh, let's say, 5 newtons, and again, mass is 7.5, but now let's say that the coefficient of static friction is 0.45, and the coefficient for kinetic friction is 0.23. Okay, so if I'm pulling this way, that means that my frictional force is going to be directed in the opposite direction. Remember, Newton's third law, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Now, I don't say that I'm pulling at constant speed, so 
we don't know whether the friction force that we're dealing with is static or kinetic. Okay. Now, again, we've still got our force due to gravity and our normal force, which we found uh, earlier to be 73.5. So our normal force is 73.5. To find out whether the object will move, we first have to deal with static friction. So the force due to static friction equals the coefficient of static friction times our normal force. Well, that becomes 0.45 times 73.5. So plugging that into the old calculadora, we get an answer of force due to static friction equal to 33.075 newtons. Now, if your pull force is less than your static frictional force, then the object does not move. Okay? So, your answer here would be object does not move and you are done. The only time the object would move is if we were pulling with a force greater than 33.075. So now let's say, instead of pulling with 5 newtons, I am pulling with 40 newtons. So now we know that the object will move. Okay? Once you know that the object moves, you move on to kinetic friction. It's the exact same equation, except you plug in mu k. So plugging in 0.23 times 73.5, we get an answer of a much lower number of 16.905. So, that's what force is pulling this way as long as we are pulling with 40 newtons and not 5 newtons. Okay? Now, why again is this kinetic friction force much less than the static friction force? That is because of the object's inertia. The inertia wants to keep the object at rest, but once you get it in motion, it wants to keep the object in motion. So it takes more force to get the object moving than it does to keep it moving. Inertia. So. Again, we're not going to accelerate in the y direction, so we need to look at our forces in the x direction. Well, that again, sum of my forces equals mass times acceleration. Now here, the, my forces are my force pull plus my force due to kinetic friction. That equals the object's mass times acceleration. Well, my pull force, we changed it to 40 newtons. And my kinetic friction force is 16.905, but it's directed in the opposite direction. So it is negative 16.905. And that equals my object's mass, which is 7.5 times the acceleration. So 40 minus 16, oops, 16.905. And then dividing that number by 7.5, we get an acceleration of 3. Point, let's go 3.08 meters per second squared. So if I asked you for the object acceleration using this force and these coefficients of kinetic and static friction, this would be your answer. Okay? Now let's do one more example dealing with forces. Let's say um, I've, got, I've got a box, and I am going to push down on it with a force, let's call that force push, of uh, 10 newtons. Okay, and let's say this, uh, this block weighs uh, 2 kilos, and I want you to find the normal force on the object. Okay. Well, free body diagram would say that you have your push force down, but then you also have your force due to gravity and then your normal force. Well, if there's no forces in the x direction, and you think about if you're pushing down, is the object going to be accelerating? No. 
So the sum of my forces in the y direction, again, equal 0. Well, the force is in the y direction. Well, that is my normal force plus my force due to gravity, but now plus my force push. All of that equals 0. Well, to find the force due to gravity, we use the object's weight. So, the force due to gravity for this object is 2 times negative 9.8, or it is negative 19.6 newtons. My force push, whoops, force push, is 10 newtons, but is directed down, so it is negative 10 newtons. So you plug those in, and you solve for the normal force. So you get a normal force of 29.6, okay? The normal force increases as I push down because, again, Newton's third law, equal and opposite reaction. If I push down, that means the table pushes back up just as hard. So the normal force increases. This is why on your scale at home, whenever you jump on it, it drastically increases. Your weight never changes. It's just mass times gravity but your normal force does increase. So that's why your scale at home doesn't measure the force to do gravity, it, or it doesn't measure your weight, it measures your normal force. So that's a short uh, video tutorial that will help you with your friction quiz. Uh, good luck.